Hello everybody and welcome back to the seventh episode of the California series. Hard to believe that we're this far into the series. Well, I'll tell you, we're this far into the series. And today we're doing a fan favorite of San Diego, the zoo. In fact, the San Diego Zoo is the best zoo ever made. So today we're leaving in a few minutes. We're going to drive down to San Diego Zoo. And we're going to see all the wonderful animals brought to us there forth. All the way from Asia to Africa to Australia to Europe to South America to North America. Every single species and thing that you could ever think of is in this zoo. So today, that's what we're doing. It's clearing up right now, the fog's getting out of the bay, and then it'll be a clear day for the sixth day of the road that I've been here. So in other words, let's get on the road and I'll see you again at the San Diego Zoo. Why is the sun always not in my face? Anyways, we made it to the zoo. Priuses don't get to park in the front. That is like a law. There are long lines to get in. Here we are, the San Diego Zoo. We made it to the zoo. Now we gotta find our way around. Maybe a trolley tour would help. Timers on board. First timers. All right, Hello. Here, me too. Well, today that is first for the day for me. Let's go exploring. Let's go see what's going on around the zoo. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be seeing somewhere a little over half of the zoo, and I'll point out those areas that we will not be covering. So you can come back a little bit later on, do some exploring all on your own. Think about the smaller stuff like the birds and the primates. Well, this is located behind the flamingos right now. This is Captain Bright. That's where you can find baby gorilla, baby orangutan, baby chimpanzee. Lots of babies. Not tiny, but they're still pretty small. Go check them out. Brings you Sky Fari Ride and also by the Fort Bowl. Safety rules, very important of course. If I can have a camera from the bus, I can see everything you're doing up there. Alright, there, that's the camera you found. And also if you have cell phones, please put them on silent, silent or vibrate mode. And just please no phone calls while you're on the bus. Now that's all done and over with, let's start off our adventure by entering Tiger Trail. I gotta make a Tiger few Trail is one of the zoo's first I gotta make a few business calls. Plants and plants <laughs> for the same reasons of the world. All group together so you can kind of see what it looks like out in the wild and some natural behaviors of the animals. And in just a few moments, we're going to make an attempt at finding yourself some tigers. The only thing is that we uh, um, did not always see them for the best. Reason being that we're looking to a very small portion of their entire enclosure. Let's give it a shot. Look on the right. 
generally difficult to see from above water and that's why we designed an underwater viewing area for them. We have 105 feet of glass we can enjoy them up close and underwater. Occasionally we see a leg, if we're very lucky we might even see a rear end. Thousand pounds and the male almost 4,000 pounds. They are huge but even though they are that big they can still outrun us. Next, and yes we found an animal, yay! Front left hand, oh actually they're all over the place. Look at the youngster running around over there on the right. He's up on the very tippy top there now. The youngsters here are a lot of fun to watch, by the way. You know, some of the adults are rescued from a market in Africa. They were going to be sold as other pets or even bush meat. All from Africa, of course. Folks, with your tickets, you are able to use the bus tours as much as you wish. But you also have access to a different bus service called the Kangaroo Bus. Let me tell you all about that. Oh, in fact, there's one right up ahead of us there. Well, the Kangaroo Buses are going to be going a very similar route that we're going on. They're just not narrated. They're going to be dropping off and taking people up. So think of your tickets. They come by every 15 minutes. And as you look through the bus, on the left, there you'll be seeing that yellow kangaroo sign there. And stand by for one second, folks. On the left hand side, back right hand corner, uh, is an area, see that elevated area of cement behind that shed? A few years ago when the construction workers were digging around in there to relay the cement, they, uh, as they were digging, they hit something really, really hard, so they got out of the vehicle to investigate it and ended up being a fossil. So I brought in some paleontologists from the Natural History Museum and they unearthed the full skeleton of an ancient whale, measuring somewhere around 19 feet in length. He has a uh, age on it somewhere around three and a half million years old, it was quite an incredible find. Multiple stripes going down the body vertically. Those would be the lesser kudus that males have beautiful spiral shaped horns. And both of these species are found in Africa. As you look to your left, these are where you have the polar bears. And I thought I saw one. Although, is the water green there? Let me see. Okay, the water is green. Although they're coming up. Okay, I really can't see very well in there. I thought he saw a polar bear back, but is there one? Yes? Okay, good. Alright, very good. So they have them in there while they're filling the water back up. Oh, there's one in the pool too. See it right over here? I see it now. Alright folks, we have three of them. One male and two females. Females are about half the size of the male. He's around the 1,100 pounds. Okay, there's a female way in the very back over there. So, again, she's about 600 pounds and males double that size. On the wild where the mills can get to be up to 1,700 pounds. That is a 600 pound difference between the ones out there and the male that we have here. Why the difference? Well, it's the food. See how the wild will be eating lots of seals. Seals have lots of blubber, which in turn gives the polar bear all that extra blubber to survive those cold temperatures. So here, 1,100 pounds seems to be just fine. In fact, here's something that I find rather funny. Think about the water temperature out the wild. And the wild's got to be, what, maybe 33 degrees or just about freezing, right? Here the temperature of the water is about uh, 55 to 60 degrees around. If it drops below that, a lot of times it will not go into the water because it's just too cold. So here we have it hard again. We'll say that our water is too cold, but it makes sense. They don't have that extra insulation. Then on the right hand side, we have a few different types of antelopes. Let me see what I can find for you here. Oh, over here with the keeper, you can see a garrigan. You'll be noticing that they have very long necks. Uh, so they can reach up a little higher than other gazelles may not be able to reach your food. Males have horns, females do not. And there she's standing up right now, see that? Next door, you can see the yellowback daggers. And you can see why they got that name. They really do have a yellowback. But notice how they're darker than some of the other antelopes you might be familiar with. That's because these animals are found in the areas where there is a lot of vegetation. So low light. 
By being darker, less conspicuous to their predators. Everything is for a reason. And for it is free to show that idea. Now if you purchase the one day pass, you did get unlimited rights for them. Now here is the tip of the day, folks. Right now we're in the very back portions of the zoo. If you're trying to get to the front of the zoo and the exit least amount of walking, consider the sky corner right. It drops down pretty much right at the exit. So remember that for the day. On the right hand side, the 4D theater. One of the ways that we fundraise for a lot of things that we do all around the world and even here at home, such as doing closures like the one that's on the left. So look to your left. As you can see, this, uh, uh, this enclosure that is, is not very big, nothing outrageously fancy. Outrageously, though, expensive. Two million dollars. It is very expensive to do things here. So by you being here, any other additional purchase you might be making, that is what helps us go. Little well, did you know that just by walking through the gates today, you're already heroes for wildlife. You find mountain lions here. They're crepuscular, so they're active at dawn and dusk. So right now, they're probably going to be asleep. Let's so check them out a little bit as the sun's starting to set. Stop number three for the kangaroo bus is up ahead to the left. There's a kangaroo bus that we saw earlier behind us here. And they have a much shorter time frame, so I'm going to go ahead and let her go on through first. But as she is departing, look on the left. Hero should be able to have a much better view of that uh, of the signs you're looking out for later on for the kangaroo buses. In your maps, you'll find similar symbols or tiny. I think you'll see those similar symbols there. Like I mentioned a few moments ago, we're in the very back portions of the zoo. Generally, it would take about 30 to 40 minutes to walk back to the front. But we did something. A couple of years ago, we built a bridge on the right, on the other side of the, those umbrellas. Now, that bridge is connecting the back of the zoo to the front of the zoo. It is a six-minute walk. Easy. Very easy at the other end of the gorillas. So, I want you to remember this later on. Stop number three will be the least amount of walking to get back to the front of the zoo and the exit. So, consider that. Up next, the blue rooms. They'll be on our left. I see one on the uh, branch of the very right tippy top of this first segment, back right hand corner of the center segment, and in the very front left hand corner of the last segment. There, see him? All right, so these here are the uh, rock hyrax. So, what do you think these animals are related to? I did hear somebody say Bill for a few moments ago. Anything else? Any other guesses? Beaver. I've heard people yellow, say guinea pigs, groundhogs, prairie dogs, uh, hamsters, mice. All of that stuff does make sense, but believe it or not, this is a relative of the elephant. So you look at them, look at me, and say, okay, what did George have for breakfast? But it's true. Dental structure, skeletal structure, and the foot, I believe, was that it is a relative of the elephant. Now check this out. Elephants are related to manatees. That's a relative of the manatee as well. Is that a kick or what? The right hand side of lines, but you know what? Rarely do we not see them, and I just don't see them right this second. Let's see here. I have a feeling the keepers are probably doing something there where they probably either have them inside or so. Alright, you gotta come back and check them out, one male and one female. Now folks, up ahead, just another second, we have an area where we just got some baby uh, birds, some chicks that were just hatched about a week or two ago. Because of that, they're very, very rare, very endangered, and the keepers have asked us not to speak once we're over in that section. So, it's going to affect the jaguars. Jaguars are on the other side of this building here. I'll pass by slowly, uh, and I won't be able to speak about them, but hopefully catch a glimpse. But again, I won't be able to be on the microphone here for just another moment or so. Let's look out for those jaguars. Now there's an opening there kind of where the glass meets the building so that's the opening to their bedroom and so she's probably back over there right now now both the lions and the jaguars do come from areas where there is uh, pretty high temperatures but ours are spoiled they don't like it very hot here there's air conditioning in their bedrooms that's where they prefer to be so i just have to come back for them but yes they're spoiled on the other side of this building, you're going to see a little glass area with a little corral there. That's because we have a brand new baby uh, beard's taper. Tapers are involved for the horses and the rhinoceroses. This little one here, even though I don't see it out right now, looks like a little brown watermelon with legs on it. You've got to come back and check him out. And he's such a big deal because we have not had a baby born here in over 30 years. Let's come back and see if we can find it right now. It's unavailable. It's probably just inside the building. You can see the guanacos in this enclosure. 
Guanacos are relatives of llamas, alpacas, and vicuñas from the Andes Mountains of South America. So basically the South American version of a camel. So knowing that, what do you think they do when they get angry, excited, offensive, etc.? What do they do? They spit. And it's not just regular spit, it's your regurgitated food, it's green, it's nasty, it smells. And they always aim for the face, and more precisely, the eyes. And I speak from experience. I did the animal shows here for about 12 years, so we had a llama bunch of my buddy. I walked into his, into his enclosure one day, just doing my normal work, and this day he must have woken up on the wrong side of the hay, he let me have it. All over my eyes, my hair, I was just a big old mess. And you can tell they're going to spit at you because they look straight at you because their ears back start pucker up their lips and at that point look away. That way they get the back of your head, not your eyes. I learned that very quickly, Ash got me twice. And the more upset that they are with you, the deeper to their stomach they go to spit at you with. I take a look, back left hand corner, sort of, kind of, almost, you can see a, uh, an elephant, right? Folks, we have the two type of elephants left in the world out of the 600 species of elephants that used to roll the earth at one point. African and Asians. How do you tell them apart? Easy. Look at their ears. This one here has much bigger ears. That would be the African. Asians, they have much smaller ears. But all the elephants have about 100,000 muscles in their trunks alone. And just by itself, that trunk can weigh all the way up to 400 pounds. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. Not a great view there, even though we got a view. Let's go around the corner. We have some more yards for the elephants on the other side of the building. But this building you see here is the Elephant Care Center. On the other side of it, so we have their pens completely exposed. That way everybody has a chance to see all the husbandry work and the training that goes on with the elephants. If the keepers are doing some work, and just not going to speak over them on the microphone, they don't want to disrupt. But if nothing's going on, we can choose check. <coughs> let me grab the corner here and let me assess. Uh, it looks pretty quiet. Oh, I do see an elephant in there. If the keepers are doing something, just going to pause in front of it. I'll let you observe and I'll speak about all this area with a past day. Let's see. Okay, they have two elephants in right now, which means they're not going to be doing any training at this point. Not with two of them at the same time. Okay, not too bad. But let's tell you a little bit about this one section. This area is an area where the elephants can go into, but only if they really wish to do so. And this is why they do. Lots of activity, training, and lots of treats. Think of a circus for a moment. Now, how they'll ask the elephants to lift up their trunk, which makes for neat picture. You can do it for a different reason. That way the keepers can see inside of their mouth. Take a look at the teeth, the roof of the mouth, the tongue. Make sure that they're in excellent conditions. And ladies, you're going to love this part too. They're also trained to present their feet. Why? Because they get a pedicure. Very often you'll be seeing an elephant getting a pedicure here. Each one gets one about once a week and they can spend all the way to 20 minutes per foot. So do we spoil them or do we spoil them? Big bird on this enclosure, back right hand corner. It is advantageous to be this tall because they are found in areas where there is tall grasses. Always on the ground in search of their favorite foods, which are smaller rodents and reptiles. They're from Africa. Alright, let's see if we have any more elephants over here. We saw three. We have a total of four. We can catch it. Oh, there's the other one. Okay, the slam on the brakes. Throw slamming on the brakes. But there's another one by the tree. That's Miss Shaba. She came to the Reed Park Zoo in Tucson, Arizona. What's the fastest land mammal in the world? Anybody know? Cheetah, 70 miles an hour. I present to you the fastest land mammal in North America. No, it's not those camels. Do you see the other guy on the extreme left? Pronghorns? Those can reach speeds of up to 50 miles an hour. But why do they eat your so fast? There's nothing here that runs that fast, but there used to be. See, these never lost their characteristics. The camels that we have a pretty good view of are the dromedary camels, single hump camels that you will find in Africa. Thousands of those exist, just all domesticated. In other words, somebody owns them. Different goes the story with the other type of camel. There's the Bactrian camels that come from China, Mongolia, those regions. Those are the double hump camels, but those other ones are very, very dangerous. And here on the right is where you find the Congos. California Congos have been soaring over our skies for thousands of years, but in the 80s, only 22 of them are left, and that's it. 22. But the San Diego Zoo, San Luis Safari Park, the LA Zoo has done an intensive breeding program with them. And because of those efforts, now there is a little over 400. So over 22 to a little over 400, 
I think that's a really good number, eight creeks. By no means are they out of the woods so critically endangered. It is a big bird, wingtip to wingtip, nine feet. That's the width of this double decker bus I'm riding on right now. It is a very big bird. And it's stop number four here on the right hand side for the kangaroo bus. There's one, the very front right hand corner. Actually, there's a couple. You know, whenever you see the group by, you're always going to see at least one of them looking all around the sky, so you can't find predators like birds of prey. Senior so cruisers, four fins, and they are a huge destructive bow. Now, the staff bus will cause a A lot of them you want. If they have a chance, come back and come to let you come to them. You see that we have some benches there, you can kind of relax, catch your breath, and enjoy the answers for those other critters. We are now passing the upper edges of a curious enclosure called Africa Rocks. Africa Rocks features uh, plants and animals from Madagascar and from Africa. Before they went into their enclosure, I found out they were going to be having some roommates, and I was pretty surprised. In the same pool, swing around with those penguins, five foot long sharks. Sharks and penguins in the same pool, you gotta go check it out, but it's really really cool. And I'm sure that somebody did a little bit of research, and they probably found that it's like a shark, but the penguin does not want to eat. Alright, good, so you got that. Alright, just checking this if you're still with me, folks. This opened up fully in uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Check out our website, sandagozoo.org. You'll be able to see all the new hip and happening things coming up in the future. Whether they be new exhibits such as this, new animals, new events, you can check out our wildlife conservancy. We have webcams. A lot of our research projects are on there as well. So lots to see, lots to learn. Sandagozoo.org. Go explore it. Because of the construction there, we had gone almost two years, actually almost three years, without going down into the canyons. And that's where we're heading to next. It's nice to have them open back up. I think we opened up the canyons about maybe about three months ago or something. Yeah. And there we go. If you ever wonder what it looked like back when the dinosaurs were around, I have a little something here that may help you out. Look on the left. What looks like miniature palm trees, kind of like big huge ferns, like right behind the uh, bench here. Those are types of cycads that have been popping around ever since the dinosaur age. Very slow growing, very ancient, and very endangered. And we have a nice little collection of them on the middle side. Not surprised, but I'll tell you what. You see the sign right over there, see the picture? That's exactly what they look like. There you go. Alright, well, let's try next door. Snow leopards. And what again? Sleep yeah, kind of asleep, we have a bear. This here is a brown bear. Brown bear and black bear, what is the difference? Well, it has nothing to do with its coloration. It has to do with the uh, hump that they have on the shoulder. It's laid down right now, so you can't really appreciate it, but it does have a pretty big hump. So there are some black bears that are brown and some brown bears that are black, but you're looking for that hump. These get to be over a thousand pounds, while the black bears maybe four to six hundred pounds, so it's a notable difference. And they eat quite a bit of food, up to 70 pounds of fish in just one city. It's a lot of fish tacos. <laughs> and it is that time of the year, so we are putting them together. And who knows, maybe we might get some little ones later on. We're hoping. Maybe let us hear. We're going to do a big eat that climb up into a tree. And I'll bring down some branches, create a little nest for them to climb in. That's where the bears will come back. Right there next to the keeper, you can see one of our leaders. That's one of the red rock lemurs that you're looking at right now. Lemurs, ooh, there's a big one. That, the most of the black, uh, uh, the blue-eyed lemurs. And those are very, very rare to do as well. They don't be too much of the high species that we have here. They're found in the island of Madagascar. 
our case is broken, but. So we went to go take our family photo before our bus tour, and the photo cost $40. So no way, we'll picture it for the rest of our lives. Hope you enjoyed the tour. That's the funniest thing ever. We are here at lunch right Thank now. You. My phone only has 5% left. I think my phone is broken. I don't think it's working anymore with the battery. And it's overheating right now. So this is the last you'll see from the San Diego Zoo. I will see you at home, everybody, why this thing is charged. The selfie camera broke. It doesn't take pictures anymore. Everything's black. They have red or blue. Thank you for watching the seventh episode of the California series. I'm gonna start my eighth episode in just a moment. I wish everyone a happy 4th of July. Of course, I'll do that in the next episode of this series. I'll tell you what's coming next when I post the next episode, which I hope is tonight. So yeah, my phone is ending quickly. The battery's draining quick. And now that it's overheating too. So when I get back, I'm gonna go get a new phone. It might be one week, it might be two weeks. But when I get back, I will hopefully get a new phone as soon as possible. And there you go. So uh, have a great day, everybody. Happy 4th. I'll start the new vlog in just a moment. So yeah, at least you saw the tour. You can be thankful. Have a great day, everybody. See you tomorrow. Goodbye.